Talk. A torque sensor, what's that? Uh, well, we all know what a strain gauge is. It is just a wheat, a wheat stone bridge which you bend or, or you deform and therefore the resistance is changing. Well, a torque sensor is nothing than this. You have a few strain gauges on a tube and you twist the tube and by that you generate a voltage uh, at the output of that Wheatstone bridge. That's the concept of, I would say, each and every torque sensor. Um, torque sensors, at least in HBM, uh, and that's where we are the, the, the technology and market leader, belong to a certain accuracy class. And I just want to spend a minute on that. Uh, the HBK definition of accuracy class is that this is the biggest single deviation from the specifications. So you might have multiple specifications like linearity, repeatability, temperature coefficient uh, for zero or for sensitivity. So gain and offset basically, yeah. And uh, please do these not mix up with total accuracy or any classification uh, according to the Dean 51309. We are talking purely accuracy class, which is an HBM definition. Yeah, um, and um, it comes with some problems, which I can show on, on this example. I just have two sensors with their linearity, um, repeatability, uh, gain and offset drift. And uh, obviously this one looks better. But as the accuracy class is, the, is a single value, which is the biggest deviation, both of, we, of these sensors have an 0.05 accuracy class. So accuracy class gives you a, a, a first quick glance on how good is that beast, but it does not tell the full truth. You really need to look into individual uh, specifications to understand that. Well, there are a lot of outputs uh, to, to allow flexibility with our torque transducers. And the question uh, we hear very often is, which ones do we use? Do we use the voltage output for torque or the frequency? Uh, which ones do we use? Or CAN bus, so what do we use? Actually, what we recommend is to use the frequency. Because first of all, this is a digital output, so it has no noise. It ha well, it's immune to noise. It has no drift like an analog output. You can transmit it in a differential mode to the power analyzer. And you can easily tee off a digital signal because you typically need that signal twice, once for the power analyzer and once for the automation system. There's one problem with a, with a frequency. It, it sounds easy to measure a frequency. Actually, it's not. The electronics, which is then a counter, needs to convert the frequency back to torque. But each and every counter has a systematic error because you start counting and you stop counting. And pending from your time limits, you might or might not have one pulse of the frequency out in your count or not. So you have a jitter at the beginning and at the end. And that means if you have a short counting time, let's say 10 milliseconds, that gives you 100 readings a second, but you have a pretty big jitter and therefore inaccuracy. If you make a loud, long counting time, you count for a second. Yeah, this jitter is, you can ignore that because it's one pulse over one second. Yeah, but if you get only one reading per second, you have no dynamic information at all. And that is, that is a, a, a trade-off you need to make when using a counter timer to convert the frequency back into a torque reading. The typical test rig setup and associated problems, and I can only spend 30 seconds on this, uh, to indicate that there are a lot of mechanical problems when mounting a, a torque transducer. It can be parasitic loads, by weight, 
by, uh, by wrong mounting, by wrong uh, screwing, all of that. And of course, there are um, env environmental influences like temperatures. Yeah, the, 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 the biggest problems, the biggest errors when using a torque transducer is typically not the, the error introduced by the torque transducer itself, but the error introduced by mounting and environment. Way bigger than the accuracy error of the, of the torque transducer. So for medium to high torque, typically flange types are used. And uh, with our T12, we definitely have the reference in, in that class. Most errors are not introduced by the torque sensor, but by mounting and environmental. And be aware that the frequency output is easy to handle, but you need to look on the accuracy of the frequency measurement afterwards. Not the output. The output gives you a frequency, but how accurately can your power analyzer measure that output? <laughs>